Have you ever heard this term when studying SN2, SN1, E2, and, and E1 reactions? Inversion of stereochemistry? What is that exactly? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about inversion of stereochemistry and the mechanisms that it's associated with. So let's say we have 2-bromobutane. I mean, 2-bromopentane, rather. And we're going to react it with cyanide in a polar apodic solvent. We'll choose DMF. Now, this is going to be an S2 reaction. We have a secondary alkyl halide. This carbon is attached to two other carbon atoms. And we have a polar aprotic solvent, which favors SN2 reactions over SN1 reactions. And we have a good nucleophile. Cyanide, iodide, a sulfur with a negative charge, those are relatively good nucleophiles. Now what's going to happen here, the nucleophile is going to attack the carbon from the back, expelling the leaving group. Now because it approached from the back side, it's going to be on the back. So this is cyanide, CN. This is what is known as inversion of configuration or inversion of stereochemistry. The bromine was in the front. Now the nucleophile is now in the back. If bromine is in the front, that means the invisible hydrogen is in the back. And here the hydrogen is in the front. So if we were to determine the configuration at the chiral center, we would get this will be group number one. The propyl group will be group number two. This is number three. H is number four. So if we count it from one, two to three, it's going counterclockwise, which will give us the S configuration. Now, the nitrile group will have the highest priority. So this will be number one. Propyl will be group number two. Methyl will be group number three. H is in the front. So 1, 2 to 3, we get S, but because H is in the front, we'll need to reverse it to put in the back. So that's going to give us R. So the configuration at the chiral center changed from S to R. You could say that it was inverted from S to R. And so that's a good example of inversion of stereochemistry. It's typically associated with S and 2 reactions. Now, they can occur with S and 1 reactions as well. But S one reactions will give us an unequal racemic mixture. So here's an example. Let's use another bromine leaving group. Now, if we were to react this with potassium iodide, we're going to get two products. We're going to get the retention product. And we're going to get the inverted product. So we get retention and inversion. Now, we typically would get more of the inverted product than the retention product. It could be 40, 60, sometimes 30, 70. But we get a little bit more because of the intimate ion pair. But S1 reactions will give us the inverted product as well. So you want to keep that in mind. Let's talk about why. So before the nucleophile comes in, the leaving group is going to leave. That's the slow step in this S1 reaction. Now when the leaving group leaves, it's not going to be too far away. So it's going to be somewhere close to that carb carbocation because positive charges are attracted to negative charges. So this is not going to be too far away. Now the iodide ion, it has two choices. It can attack from the back side, giving us the inverted product, or it can attack from the front, giving us the retention product. The problem is if it attacks from the front side, it has to go through that bromide ion and it's repelled by the bromide ion. And that's why we get less of the retention product and more of the inverted product. 
by approaching from the back side, it doesn't have to interact with that bromide ion. And so that's why we see more of the inverted product than the retention product in an S1 reaction. But if you want 100% inversion, you want to go with the S2 reaction. Now on a test, sometimes the substrate may be presented in the form of a chair conformation. And you need to know how to perform inversion with this type of substrate. So let's say we have chloral cyclohexane and let's react it with a methyl thiolate ion. What's going to be the product of this reaction? Now we have a secondary alkyl halide, a very good nucleophile. So this is going to be an SN2 reaction. We're going to get inversion of stereochemistry. The nucleophile is going to attack the carbon and kick out the leaving group. But how do we show inversion of configuration with a chair conformation? All we have to do is switch the leaving group from being in the axial position and put the nucleophile in the equatorial position. So that's how we can show inversion of stereochemistry if the substrate is presented as a chair conformation. So basically switch it from axial to equatorial and vice versa. Now sometimes you may have an SN2 reaction where the substrate is presented in the form of a Fischer projection. So let's react this with potassium iodide in acetone. So acetone is a polar aprotic solvent and iodide is a good nucleophile. And we have a secondary alkyl halide. All of these factors favor an SN2 reaction. Now the nucleophile is going to attack this carbon from the back, kicking out the leaving group. So to show inversion of stereochemistry, with a Fischer projection, all you have to do is switch it. So the bromine was on the right side. The iodine atom is going to be on the left side. So now the configuration at the chiral center is going to change. This is group number one. This whole thing is group number two. This is number three, and whenever hydrogen is either on the left or on the right side, you treat it as if it's in the front, which means we're going to reverse it. So one, two to three, that gives us S, but once we reverse it, we're going to get R. Now for the other one, this is group one, group two, group three. This will give us R. H is in the front. When we reverse it, we'll get S. So we can see that the configuration at the chiral center was inverted. So that's it for this video. For those of you who want more practice problems on SN1, SN2, E1, and E2 reactions, feel free to check the links in the description section below.